Hello YouTube and welcome to another Linux tutorial. So in this video I will show you some useful functions that we can use using SQLite. So are you ready? Let's get started. So actually you can divide SQLite functions into three sections. Core functions, aggregate functions and date and time functions. So, in order to demonstrate that, let's first of all connect, as you can see here, to sample DB or SQLite database. So, I will use SQLite, then the name of my database. Here we go. So, if I type tables, you can see the tables that my database contains. Okay. So, now let's begin with the date and time functions. So you can, for example, display the date using a select command or select the statement, then a function called date. And we give it actually as parameter now. So normally it will give us the date for today. Okay, so here we go, as you, you can see, we are on the 4th April 2018. Okay, we can use another functions, but this time using date and time. So this function will give us actually the date plus the time right now. Okay, here we go. We can, or if you want just to get the time, we can use the time function. So we just use the time function and we get the current time right now. Okay. There is also a function called uh, street of time. So I add here string actually of time. But as parameter, you can give it actually a string. So I will uh, give it, for example, the month or the day first. Then we can display the month, then the year. Okay, so all this string here will be converted to the corresponding date, month, and year, or the day actually. So I get the same result as before. So there are the most used date and time functions. Okay, so now let's move to the aggregate functions. Well, the most common is the count function. So for example, as you can see here, we have a table called students. So let's display the content of this table students. So I will display all from the table students. Okay. So here are the rows. We have actually 10 rows. So I can use the aggregate functions to just get the total of rows. So let's say we have a huge table that contains many rows. We can just use the count function, which is an aggregate function that will display. So I can just name it another thing, like for example, total. Okay, here we go. We have 10 rows. There are also a lot of other functions like, uh, for example, sum, the min, the max. So all these are actually aggregate functions that we can use with SQLite or SQL statements. So when you are using actually queries, you are using these aggregate functions. Okay. So now let's finish by giving some example of core functions or functions that is built in within SQLite. So as an example, for example, you can display the version of the SQLite that you are using. So I will just use the function called SQLite version. So I will select this function here, which is SQLite. And version. But uh, I need yes underscore then version. Okay, so this is a function. 
we must use a parenthesis and I can name this column actually as uh, version yeah version or you can just leave it without giving it this parameter okay so now if I execute this query you will see that I'm using SQLite version 3.22.0 okay there is also a very famous function or core function that you can use, which is random. So the random function actually displays a random number or random integer. Okay. So let's select a random integer, for example, here. I can name this column, for example, yeah, number or random number, exactly a random number. And I can hit enter and here we go now I have I don't know how many billions here I have but it's a random integer that was generated randomly by SQLite okay you can also use some functions that actually convert the characters so for example if here you can see in my student tables that we have the name of our students so only the first letter is actually in capital we can make the whole field capital so we can use the let's first of all see the schema of this table here of this table student okay so the first field is actually student ID and second field is is the student name so we can make all the student name capital using a function called upper okay so I can just do select upper and given the actually the name of the field which is student name okay I can just name it uh, for example name here from our table to students and this function actually will make all the student name in capital so here we go now you can see all student name in capital letters I can turn them to lower using the lower function so all the name now are in lower case I can even get the length of each name using the function length so here I will use the function length and here I can make length of the names or just uh, how many characters so let's leave it just like that Here it's giving me an error, no such function length, yeah, because I miss typed it. Actually, I should use th, not ht. And here we go, you see now that how many characters has every name in our student's table, okay? And finally, there is a very interesting uh, function called total change. Actually, we displays how many rows were affected by insert or update or a delete. So I'll show you how we can use it. For example, let's display the student's uh, table. Okay. So let's, uh, for example, uh, insert another field or another row. So insert into our table which is students some values so an ID as 11 and let's make a name as uh, let's say max and here doesn't matter what I put let's put 2 and the date I can just leave it like the others Okay. So actually here I'm inserting a single row in our table 
okay so if you want to see how many rows or lines has been affected with this insert which is actually just one row I can execute the function called total change so I will select total changes okay I can name it whatever I want let's name it actually uh, let's say uh, rows affected okay so from our table which is students actually I think I did a mistake we should not provide the table name just display like that okay here we go so as you can see now only one rows has been added so actually this total changes will help you to see how many rows are affected if you for example execute a delete or update SQL statement so that those were actually one of the most used function if you are using SQLite as always I hope it has been informative for you and I want to thank you for viewing bye bye